Recycling of smartphones. What happens when you throw your old phone away? The taxi waiting outside. A new email message alert. A recent post on Instagram. We check our phones hundreds of times a day, mostly for small things, but sometimes for important ones. Hey everyone, how you doing today? Before we proceed with this video, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Kindly click on the notification bell to get updates on our exciting content. Today's video will examine what happens when you throw your old phone away. Mobile devices often feel like an extension of our bodies because they sit in our pockets or handbags like memory banks or organs that we don't have to take care of. But unlike a liver or heart, most people prefer to get a new phone every 20 months or so when a better model comes out. And the phone that used to seem so important is thrown away. Are you ready to find out what happens when you throw your old phone away? Let's get started. More than 5 billion people worldwide have cell phones, and many of them are always getting new ones. Some people throw away their old phones like any other trash. They end up in landfills, breaking down and releasing toxic chemicals into the environment. This wastes $55 billion worth of resources like gold every year. Some people let their phones pile up in old drawers, producing shrines to outdated devices. But people who care about the environment and want to live in a sustainable way often look for recycling centers where a phone can be fixed up and sold again, or its parts can get a second chance at life without hurting the environment. At least, that's what the end goal is. But how does a phone get from a SIM card that has been taken out to a new source? First, a little history. The Verge says that electronic waste, or e-waste, is the waste stream that is growing the fastest and causing the most problems worldwide. It includes computers, TVs, printers, cell phones, and any other device that uses electricity. In 2014, Americans threw away more than 15 to 16 billion pounds of electronic waste, which is about 50 pounds per person. By the end of 2018, the amount of e-waste should reach 50 million tons per year. Most e-waste is not thrown away in a way that is good for the environment. In fact, only about 14 to 21 percent of e-waste is recycled worldwide, and the ways of recycling are very different. Many countries just ship their e-waste to other countries, where toxic materials like lead, cadmium, and mercury cause problems for the environment and people's health. In 2016, researchers at MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, put tracking devices on 200 devices thrown away in the U.S. They followed the devices to Hong Kong, Mexico, Taiwan, China, Pakistan, Thailand, the Dominican Republic, Canada, and Kenya. This showed how complicated it is to manage e-waste, which can be found worldwide. Sean McGann, VP of Sales and Marketing for Sims Recycling Solutions, told Global Citizen that reducing waste is one of the biggest problems recyclers face today. Desktop computers used to be made almost entirely of metal and were easy to recycle. Now, more things are made of plastic, and the average size of each device has gone down. From an entity point of view, you have to do a lot more for metal recovery. So, in general, we're getting smaller pieces of equipment that contain more dangerous materials, he said. Quartz says it has taken a long time for countries to pass laws about e-waste. Still, they're finally starting to do so as environmental and health concerns grow. When China, which took in 70% of the world's e-waste in 2016, stopped letting other countries bring in certain devices at the beginning of this year, countries like the U.S. rushed to find alternatives. Reuters says that Thailand quickly became a new dumping ground, and the government is now considering whether or not to put similar rules in place. Some types of e-waste in the U.S., like TVs and computer monitors, are dangerous and can't be thrown away with the regular trash. Beyond that, laws about e-waste vary from state to state, with 25 states having more rules and the rest not having any. California was the first state to create an e-waste rule in 2004. This rule taxes certain electronic devices like computer monitors, TVs, and laptops at the point of sale to pay for their disposal by certified recyclers in the future. But cell phones and other electronic devices are not covered by this law yet, even though they make up a big part of the 273,000 tons of e-waste in California landfills every year. McGann also noted that a lot has changed in the last 10 years in the way electronics are made. For instance, the first iPhone came out in June 2007, and since then, the market has been flooded with smaller items, such as wearables. A report that wants California's e-waste law to be updated says the growth of automation, sensor, and artificial intelligence technology has been faster than many recycling laws. Because of this, recyclers often don't want to take cell phones because the cost of taking them apart is usually higher than what the materials can be sold for. 
Recode suggests that this problem needs to be fixed right away because 1.7 billion models are sold every year. Every day, 416,000 cell phones in the U.S. are thrown away or burned, releasing toxins into the air, water, and soil. The best thing would be for someone else to use your old phone after the hard drive is erased. You can market it on websites like eBay or Craigslist, give it to thrift stores, or find a licensed recycler who will take care of all the details for you. Many stores that sell electronics are also required by law to take in old cell phones and find ways to get rid of them and recycle them. By recycling iPhones, Apple, for example, was able to get back $39.9 to $40.1 million in gold in 2015. Other places focus on recycling to help protect the environment. In New York, for example, the Lower East Side LES Ecology Center collects old phones and sells them at a second-hand store. Before a phone is sold, a technician will clear its memory, fix any broken parts, and clean it up. Phones that are too old or broken to be sold again are put on pallets and sold to recyclers. The recyclers take the phones apart and separate the useful parts from the trash. This makes fewer people want to buy new phones and keeps harmful chemicals from getting into the environment. But the recycling process is often messy and can sometimes be dangerous for workers. Most of the time, pallets of cell phones are sent to other countries where recycling and getting rid of trash aren't as strict. For example, some small business owners in Southeast Asia melt down old cell phone circuit boards outside to get tiny pieces of gold and other precious metals. Recode says that when people do this, they often breathe in dangerous chemicals without safety masks. Where rules are stricter, the recycling process is done with more care. People in the U.S. often have to look for legal places to recycle e-waste, like the ones that LES Ecology works with. The Verge says that in big cities, recyclers sometimes work with building managers to collect a lot of e-waste at once. In that case, garbage trucks pick up a lot of e-waste and take it to facilities where people use sledgehammers to break it apart. Workers shred it on assembly lines and machines separate valuable minerals from the trash before pounding everything into dust. The precious metals and plastic are then put into bags and sold to smelters or thrown away in a way that doesn't pollute the environment too much. Even in this case, the effects of e-waste on the environment and health can't be stopped. Because of this, environmental groups like Greenpeace are telling companies that make electronics to stop using all dangerous materials. As people around the globe learn more about e-waste, some companies are looking for greener alternatives. In the meantime, though, the old sustainability rule of reduce, reuse, recycle is still good advice. That's it on recycling of smartphones. What happens when you throw your old phone away? Let us know your observations and thoughts in the comments section below. If this video was insightful for you, then go on and like the video. Please kindly subscribe to our channel and click on the bell button for more of our updates.